Hi, I'm Tim Clark with Gasville USA. And I'm Gary Hatch with Road Ready Inspections. We're very fortunate to have Gary with us today because Gary is internationally known as a classic car expert. Gary, what is the value of a pre-purchase inspection? You know, that's a very good question. There's a lot of value to an inspection. You're going to find out both the positive and the negative aspects of any vehicle that you're looking at, whether it's a car, a truck, could be a classic car, but we also do new cars as well. It's not uncommon to do a car that's only two or three months old. The reason for that is there's still a lot of fear. You can't go look at the car. It's a couple thousand miles away, perhaps, and you just want to know, is the car real? Is the, is the car in good shape? Even though it's brand new and has a warranty, I still want to know if the car is, is worth buying. You know, most inspections seem to revolve around a long distance purchase, but sometimes people purchase a car locally. Should they be inspected? I would definitely get an inspection done, even if it's local. The reason is you're going to get a second set of eyes on the car. We're also not emotionally attached like you might be. Uh, you show up to the car, it's a car you've always wanted. Next thing you know, you're, where do I sign? How do I buy the car? And you overlooked all the issues that it may have, both positive and negative. You've looked at a lot of cars for me across the United States. Some turned out to be really good, and others, you know, you suggested that I pass on just because of imperfections. The inspection is very detailed. Tell me about your 158 point inspection. Okay. So the 158 points, uh, some of the bigger items that people are concerned of would be rust, um, body filler, maybe the glass, is it delaminating, the chrome, is it all pitted? Uh, these are some of the bigger, or the big highlights, but you've also got little things, power window switches, uh, seat motors, convertible top hydraulic systems, uh, the hinges on the doors, the hinges on the trunk and the hood, so things that we quite often don't even think about. There's 158 of these items that we'll go through, and not only the outside of the car, but we're gonna get underneath the car and look and see if there's any issues underneath. So you've got a frame, suspension, floors, a trunk. I mean, the list goes on. There's a lot of potential issues, and we wanna give you all the information. So under the hood is one of the most important items. Tell me about uh, inspection underneath the hood. So it usually will start with arriving to the car and it's cold. We hope that the seller hasn't started it yet. We want to do a cold start. And uh, before we're going to do that, we're going to check all the fluids. So radiator, antifreeze condition, uh, contamination is a big one. Uh, oil levels, uh, smells, do they smell like they're uh, burned or, or somehow uh, contaminated? Do we see a milky surface on the oil, for example, that might uh, indicate further issues? But then we're going to do a cosmetic inspection. Uh, are there missing items? Is the wiring uh, brittle or frayed? Are there exposed wires? Uh, have the things been routed correctly through the firewall? We often see wires that just go through an opening that it's rough and sharp, uh, can cause fire even. So there's a lot of things to look at under the hood. The body and paint might be one of the biggest concerns of a buyer. Tell me how you check that. So the body and paint, there's issues that can be done with uh, spraying pressure when they, when they actually apply the, the paint. So you could have solvent pops, uh, you could have orange peel, that's where the paint literally looks like an orange. It's called, got a little mottled look to it. Maybe it's dull or oxidized. So we're looking at um, all these different issues in trying to judge paint condition. Um, it's often a good segue into body filler. So what's it look like underneath that car? What's the condition before they actually spray painted it? Has it got sanding marks? Uh, is there waves in the body? Um, and then I mentioned body filler. Well, how thick is that filler? So there's a lot of issues there that could possibly uh, be not just the paint. So how do you check the thickness of the body filler and paint? You know, that's really uh, a, a, an area where things have advanced a lot. So we used to use magnets, and that was probably the number one way to check for body filler, and maybe you pound on the surface. But there's a, a new method that I like to use. It's a paint meter or a paint gauge. Uh, what this does is it measures the body structure, so the metal of the car, all the way out to the outside layer of the paint. Um, maybe you've got primer, and then you've got a base coat, and then a clear coat. So how thick is that? 
So this paint meter will actually help us to understand how thick the car is. Does it have thin areas or thick areas? So we're going to get a baseline as we go around with this gauge. What is the car registering? It's usually 8 to 15 microns. And by the way, a micron is 4.3 microns is about the thickness of a dollar bill. So if that'll help you understand. So you've got about one to three layers of a dollar bill on your car. So very, very thin. But when you run into an area that might have body filler, now that micron count might be 50, 60. It might even not even register anymore. So then we're gonna look a little deeper. We're gonna start probing to see what we've got going on. Is it body filler? Is it a, a foreign matter? Is it cardboard, tape? There's a lot of things that could be hiding there. Tell me about the driving inspection. So we do perform a test drive. We want that, as I mentioned, a cold start, and then we'll do the test drive. It's generally three to five miles, long enough for us to get the car up to operating temperature. And we also want it to be far enough that we've checked all the forward gears and the reverse gear. Make sure it's shifting, driving as it should. The handling's correct. We do an acceleration check, an alignment check. Um, we have the uh, let go of the wheel. Make sure it doesn't drift or pull, especially when we apply the brakes. So there's a checklist uh, item list for the test drive itself. So yeah. Many cars have air conditioning, so do you check the air conditioning during the test drive? Yes, yeah, so before I usually do the drive, I'm looking at the engine and we'll do a, a cold start and then we're listening for strange sounds. We go around the back of the car and make sure there's no smoke or, or uh, items that might be present during that initial startup. Once we've confirmed that's okay, we'll start doing checklist items like an air compressor. Is it engaging? Because when I'm in the car, it may feel cool because it's cool outside. I might think that it's working, but the compressor might have never kicked on. Mm. So yeah, we want to check that. So after you finish your 158 point inspection, what's next? So at that point, we're going to send the customer a detailed report. Um, it's generally got uh, 70, 80 photographs in it or more. You've got checklists with comments. So maybe we find rust on the vehicle. Bottom of the door is a, is a really common area for rust bubbles. So we would take a picture of what those rust bubbles look like and tell you, Tim, I found five rust bubbles. They're about a quarter inch in diameter each. So besides the inspection of the vehicle, there's also another value uh, in today's world. Uh, this, there are scams out there and a potential buyer may just want to be reassured that the vehicle is real and the seller is real. That is probably an, a, a hidden thing that most people don't even think of. So I like to call them red flags. So a red flag would be, is the car real? Are the pictures you saw online the same as the car that we uh, inspected? Or were those taken 10 years ago? Uh, we're gonna find out the seller's address. We're gonna call the seller and make sure his phone works, uh, that the car really is there. And what else we'll do for you, Tim, is gonna check the VIN number, any data tags or, or, or ID that's on the vehicle so that you know that you're getting what you hope to get and what you're, what you're wanting to purchase. A person has found a car they're interested in, it's been inspected. How long do they wait for a report? So the reports generally come with, uh, within 24 hours or the next business day. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. That is fast. So Gary, you've looked at many vehicles for me across the United States, and I understand you also offer your services in Canada. What requirements do you require for your inspectors? That's a really good question because we really don't want a person right out of school looking at a classic car. Um, not that there's anything wrong with their training, but they just don't have the hands-on experience that maybe guys like you and I, guys that are getting bald and, and going gray. You know, we, we've worked on these cars, maybe we worked at General Motors when the 1965 Ford Mustang came out. So that's the caliber and the quality of people that we have. They're generally 20 plus years experience. Uh, they almost always own a classic car. I myself own a classic car, and as you can see behind us, Tim owns a few of them as well. Besides pre-purchase inspections, what other services do you offer? We have been doing the pre-purchase inspection since we opened, but a few months ago I was able to get a warranty um, rider so that if you buy a classic car, you can have 
a warranty placed on that so your engine, transmission, drivetrain, rear end can now be covered. Uh, these policies go from three months to as long as five years. So that's a great service that we've just added. Gary, what makes road ready inspections different from the competition? Well, think about it. We're car, we're car guys. This is in our blood. I've been a gearhead since I was a little boy. I was always tearing things apart and putting them back together. You know, the, the other main difference is the fact that when you call us, you're speaking to a live person, someone with experience, someone knowledgeable like us, that uh, has the ability to help you and answer your questions and be there for you. Always a live person, always treated with respect and professionalism. Gary, I've really enjoyed our conversation today about classic cars and the value of a pre-purchase inspection. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun for me. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it. It's always fun to talk about cars. We appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you.